What's good you guys, it's Lifestyle from LifestyleDidIt.com and in today's tutorial we're going to be going over how to mix kicks and 808s, how to get them to punch harder, how to get your 808s to be heard on phones. Uh, just, you know, you guys wanted a tutorial on how I get my 808s and kicks to hit hard, so in this tutorial we are going to do it. Let's get it. Alright, cool. So, put these in real quick. Alright, so I have this uh, pretty simple drum loop that I just made right now with, you know, a normal kick. I'm using uh, drums that you guys would be able to use that everyone has. So this is just the basic rack kick that you always hear in 808 Mafia, Metro Boomin type stuff. Uh, we got the Metro Sizzle or not Sizzle Snap. Uh, it's the it's the. I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. It's the 808 Metro Boomin always uses that you always hear uh, that everyone uses. And then we have a normal hi hat. Uh, my clap from my drum kit, the Lean Cuisine drum kit, uh, crash, and some open hi-hats. Anyways, main thing is this kick that everyone has, rat kick, and this 808. So, here's the pattern. Alright, so the first thing you need to know about mixing kicks and 808s is... Um, your sound selection needs to be good. So if you have a really bad kick and a bad 808, no matter how much mixing you do, they're not going to hit like you want them to. So the very first thing that is the major key in getting this is sound selection. And that's very overlooked because I'm telling you, none of this is hard. But when I started off, I thought it was crazy. I'd be on forums all the time trying to find how to do it, how to do this, blah, blah, blah. For Honestly, for like a year, my drums were not hitting. And I remember I purchased this class for like $100 on how to mix, uh, I think like a hip-hop beat or something. And the first thing he says is sound selection and uh, leveling, volume. And I don't know, I've always heard that, but when you spend $100 and you hear that again, it's like it clicked. I went back, I took all the plugins off, and I found a really good kick in 808 and just listened to them for like 20 minutes. And I found two that, that sounded like they'd work together. I did no processing and I just balanced it, leveled it out, and I swear to God it hit harder than any other beat I've ever had. And I was very irritated because I spent a lot of money, but I was also happy. So either way, it works. But don't spend $100 to learn something unless it's something I'm not teaching. I'm just playing. But, you know, you could, sometimes you got to spend money to learn stuff you already know. You just got to hear it again. So anyways, we got a hard kick and we got an 808. These two work very nice together. That's why I'm using them to show you guys. So all we're going to do is take all these things in the pattern and we're going to go here. I don't know why this is always saying sample. And link starting from this track and they're all going to be linked here. Alright, so the number one thing you want to do on your kick is do cut itself on your 808. Do cut itself as well, which I already did. Uh, you want to come here make sure loop points is turned off so it's not looping over and over again. Sometimes I do a little bit of a fade out. Uh, right here on the 808 you don't have to do that I just like to do it sometimes so it's not a long note it kinda just dies out so the kick and the 808 hit at the same time but there's not a super long tail on the 808 uh, depending on the type of beat you make that doesn't matter it's just a very uh, strong habit of mine so we are going to go first thing first we're going to go to the kick right here and we're gonna solo it and right here you have your stereo separator. We're going to turn this all the way to mono. You want your kick in 808 to be mono, which is straight up the middle. Uh, sometimes, not all the time, but you'll see kicks and they'll kind of look like this. Just act like I didn't do this. They'll kind of be panned over to like the left or the right a little bit because of reverb or something they stuck on it. So that's why you're going to go ahead and stick it like that, which is turning it straight to mono. Do the same thing on the 808. So the first thing we're going to do with the kick is just play it and level it out. The kick is the loudest thing in the mix usually, so I usually take my kicks and I'll go in here and I'll turn the volume, um, the velocity of it all the way up on all of them. So you could just, you know, if it was normal, you just click one of them, right click and drag over like that. It'll bring them all up. And then we're going to go to the kick right here. Make sure we have loop points turned off. Sometimes it just likes to loop things. Always turn that off. And then we're going to leave this at zero, this fader, but we're going to balance the kick to about negative 10 over here negative 9 so we leave headroom because once all these other instruments and your leads and stuff start to come in you want to have headroom on your master um, you don't want to get close to clipping so since the kick is the loudest we're gonna level that first like I did in my other tutorial so we're just gonna turn this down until we're getting about like negative 9 negative 10 somewhere over here alright that's cool um, 
another thing we're going to do, which you can do if you want, you don't have to do it, but I always do this on my uh, 808, or my kicks, sorry. I come over here, and I take this first one, and we're going to do uh, a high pass filter on it, so we're going to take out some of the super low end, around, let's say, 30 to 40 hertz, because usually kick drums are hitting around 50 to 60, that's where their sub low is. Anything below that uh, isn't really doing too much, and you're not going to be able to pick it up and hear it, and you're leaving room for the 808. You don't have to do this. I don't always do this, but most of the time I do around like you know 30 to 40. We're just going to take that out. And now what you're going to notice is, remember how we're at negative 9 on the kick? Well, now since we did that, we added a resonant peak, because when you, um, do, um, when you do high pass filters or low pass filtering, there's a resonant bump that comes right here. And what I mean by that is you'll see it creates basically this bump right here. So even if you don't have that bump visually and see it, that resonant peak happens and that's just you can go read up on EQs and understand why it happens. Um, if I try and explain it to you guys, it's going to take forever. But when you do lop off things on low pass or high pass filters, it adds a bump. It's just the way sound works. So you're going to need to go back and adjust from there because you're going to see, like I said, it added about 2 dB. So we're just going to go over here and turn it back down a little bit. Okay, so now we have that. We're going to bring in our 808, and we're going to bring in our 808 low. Because the number one thing, if you want your kick to hit, you don't want your 8. If you want your kick to hit harder than the 808, you do not want the 808 right here, level-wise. Because the kick is not going to be punching. You want it to be down here. And the 808 is more, if it's a kick and an 808, the 808's more to fill out the bottom end. If the 808 is by itself, like you hear in a, like Magnolia or something where there's not too much kicks going on, the 808 can be high, you know, it's by itself, it's controlling the song. But when you have an 808 and a kick, they're competing for low end, so they cannot be the same. You need to choose one or the other. Usually you want your kicks to hit harder, so you're going to level your 808 uh, pretty much a lot lower than the kick, but it levels out perfectly. So we're just going to bring it in slowly. Let me turn this up on my headphones so I can hear it. Now let me show you guys what I mean. If I bring this 808 up all the way, our kick is gonna just, it's gonna sound really weak compared to if it's down here. So you see it's filling it out. You still hear the bass and when you hear this in a car, it's gonna slap. You're not destroying the low end with so much bass that you can't even hear the kick. Uh, another thing we're gonna do on this 808 is we're gonna do some distortion. So we'll use a Camel Crusher. It's a pretty cool free distortion plugin you can get. Uh, let's just solo the 808 and get a cool tone. That's way too much. Let me see. I think I have a preset in here. Yeah. And then we're going to come over here to the mix knob and we're going to turn this down. We just want a little bit of distortion. So before, after. And what distortion is doing is it's adding uh, high end frequencies. So this is how you're going to hear it on systems uh, that can't produce the super lows. Phones, earbuds, uh, little speaker systems, things that don't have that low end. When you distort something, it gives it high end content, which is going to pop up and it gives it a lot of mid range, which makes it pop up on these speakers. So that's how you hear the disgusting 808s. You think that it's the low end, but it's actually distortion on the low end that creates more uh, frequency range so you hear the high end and you hear the mid range of the 808 and it perceives in your ears as you're hearing a lot of bass but you're actually not so that's how you get away with it so if you see what I'm saying right here if I uh, mute or take off um, the camel crusher just watch over here so most of our stuff is ending you know before this yellow line that I just made now if we add this now we're getting frequencies all the way up to over here. And then the ones in the middle, like around here, are a lot more powerful. If you go crazy with it, watch, you'll see. It just adds a lot more uh, frequency range from mids to highs. So you're gonna hear it more. So that's just, you know, I just wanted to give you an example of how that kind of works, what that does. Okay, so that sounds good. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of people that cut a lot of low end out of their 808s. I don't really do that because the lowest note that I'm using, which is C, uh, is around 32.7 hertz, I think it is. 
I don't know why I remember that. I just, I'm telling you guys, I used to study all this trying to figure out everything. So I remembered all the note frequencies. But low C is um, this one right here. Peaks around 32.7 hertz. So I don't really even go in there and cut out like the 20 hertz because honestly on a lot of 808 since it's already processed, they're cut out. And on this one it is, if you go and look at it, there's not too much below even 20. So um, I just leave the 808s like that. Like I said, you pick good sounds if you know them. You'll be fine. There's not too much you have to do. Um, but like I said, let's get back into this. Uh, like I said, most of it's leveling. So we're going to go back and play our kick and level our 808 out. Okay. And we're going to bring in some hi-hats. Another thing that you guys kind of have to like memorize and learn is... Uh, when you just have a kick in an 808, they can hit hard. But if you add like a crash or you add like a hi-hat that hits on top, um, it's going to add a lot more punch because your ears are perceiving it loud. Um, what's the Drake song called? Uh, Take care, or, uh, just hold on, we're coming home. Whatever that song is, if you go listen to that song, that kick has like a hi-hat layered on top of it. So there's not even that much low end on this uh, kick drum. There's just this really loud hi-hat that makes you think it's coming in loud. I forgot the song, but it's just that just hold on, we're coming home song. And you hear that kick drum come in and there's a hi-hat on it with a lot of high end and it's distorted and it makes the kick sound like it's really punching. But if you really listen to it, there's not that much low end in that. It's a very like mid-range top heavy kick so that they could push the track louder because it doesn't have a lot of low end but they add that hi-hat on top which just gives it that sound of the kick drum just hitting hard as hell but it's actually really not uh so we're just gonna have our hi-hat watch let me show you what i mean so this is just the kick in the 808 you add a hi-hat right in the beginning it just sounds like it's hitting harder next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the crash I'm going to just take out some low end on this crash real quick. Uh, oh, I didn't even add the crash. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Bring in our clap. Okay, so like like I said, you know, it's all leveling. If we bring up this clap way too loud, the kick drum's going to sound like it's not hitting because the clap's louder. So you want the kick to be the loudest and everything kind of leveled around it. If we bring up the hi-hats too much, same thing. The kick doesn't sound like it's hitting as hard. So everything is about leveling, really listening. Um, so you want to, you know... Mix in mono, so turn the main one to mono as well, and mix low. Bring it down here and really listen to what you're hearing. And then you can bring the volume back up. And the reason that you want to mix in mono and mix low is so you can hear what's going on. If you mix really loud, everything just sounds loud. You're not really going to be able to hear what's going on. So you want to have your volume low uh, either on, you could turn it down there or turn it down on your speakers just for a while you're mixing put it in mono and just listen really closely make sure your doors are closed you know there's nothing going on nothing loud the TV's off and just have it really low and just listen and make sure everything's level alright and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll just throw a limiter on here real quick I'm gonna turn my volume down you guys might want to turn yours down as well and I'm gonna just bring this up to normal level So basically, that was a super simple way of how I mix my kicks and 808s. Like I said, it's nothing crazy. You don't want to overlook it. Just choose good sounds. Choose leveling. If you want to add some distortion, go ahead and then kind of take a little bit of low end out of the kick. If you want, you can leave it. But sometimes if there's too much low end in the kick, it's going to clash with the 808. So just use your ears, you know what I'm saying? Figure out how you want to do it. And make sure you use your elements around. A really hard, like just one hit hi-hat. Let's just show you guys an example real quick. We'll take all of these other hi-hats out and we'll just put one here. Okay, so with, without, with, makes it sound like the kick was hitting a lot harder. So it's just tricks you can do. 
Um, just make sure you know you're leveling correctly. Your 808 is a little bit below your kick and your kick is the loudest. You guys will be fine. Your stuff will be hidden hard. I hope this tutorial helped you guys. Um, I did want to cover this for a while and you guys have been asking for it. So here it is, you know what I'm saying? If you guys did like this tutorial, please comment, like, rate, and subscribe. If you guys want to find me on any social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, on here, it's going to be at Lifestyle Did It. If you guys want to hit my website for beats, mix orders, website design, drum kit, logo designs, all that, it is at LifestyleDidIt.com. Make sure to subscribe to the family, you know what I'm saying. All right, thanks, gang, gang, gang.